Have you ever met the connector? Well, he ponders, he helps, he creates, he writes, he speaks. He basically connects people and brings them together. I speak about Paul Solano of PS and All Marketing Group. At psandallmarketinggroup.com, you will receive an assembled group of Paul's contacts and connections that cross into many sectors of life. Please contact Paul Solano at 617-240-4130 or psandallmarketinggroup at gmail.com if you are in the market for a wide array of services. Again, please contact The Connecta, Paul Solano at 617-240-4130 or psandallmarketinggroup at gmail.com with any questions. And now... Here's Paul Solano, the host of Paul Ponders. Welcome to Paul Ponders. My name is Paul Solano of PS and All Marketing Group, and I may be reached via email at paul at paulponders.com. Thank you for joining me for my foray into podcasting. It is great to be collaborating with my friend and associate, Chalonzo Amos of Pod Pro Entertainment, to bring you some fun, exciting, and informative podcasts. For many years, I've been referred to as the Connector, or in Greater Boston Circles, as the Connector. With PSNLMarketingGroup.com, I've created a side gate to connect you and get things done. Please sit back and relax and listen to today's podcast. If you are driving or operating heavy machinery and just listening, then please just listen and stay focused on your task at hand. Thanks again for listening. Enjoy my ponderings. Let hashtag Paul Ponders begin. Greetings, everyone. How is everyone doing? I want to thank you for tuning in, logging in, and listening to us. It's hashtag Paul Ponders. Great to have you here, and I have to thank Techie Tolonzo, Behind the Curtain, Pod Pro Entertainment, hashtag Pod Pro Entertainment. And you're with Paul Ponders, hashtag Paul Ponders, part of the PS and all marketing group. And really, I just want to thank you for rating, reviewing, subscribing. Our Spotify listing is growing. It's growing. Thank you so much for just um, checking us out on Spotify and all those kind reviews. I know I often say it, but people do stop me at Stop and Shop at Wegmans at Pearl Street Station. They say, Paul. What a fascinating podcast you had last week. A couple of weeks ago, great podcast. Well, this podcast, this episode is no different. We're very honored to have from the Malden High School class in 1967, we have Sandra Mary Platt Norcross. Welcome, Sandra. Oh, thanks, Paul. It's wonderful to be with you. Nice to see you again. It's nice Thank to have you. you on, and you're in Texas right now, right? I am. I'm in Corinth, Texas. It's northwest of Dallas. That's fabulous. Well, I thank you for for uh, recording this podcast with us, and I know lots of Malden High people are going to be listening, tuning into this, and we'll be posting this accordingly. And all but, you're from Malden, and you're living in Texas. So tell us about yourself, uh, Malden High School, BB Junior High, all the things we've talked about. Yeah, so um, I was actually born in Weymouth, Massachusetts, and there's a famous hockey player, if you, re- if you think about it. Right now, he plays for the Boston Bruins, and his first name is Charlie. And what's his last name? McAvoy. McAvoy, he's from, he's from Weymouth. So I was born in Weymouth. Um, my mother was visiting a family in Weymouth. She was there for Thanksgiving. Um, she was born in Scotland. My dad was Canadian, so neither one of them were American. But she had come down from Canada and was visiting in Braintree and uh, went into labor. So I was born in Weymouth, Mass. Um, I returned to live in Montreal in Canada with my parents um, until they separated. And then my mother took me to uh, back to Massachusetts, and I lived in Malden. 
uh, with my mother. So I, I went to uh, elementary school and then and to BB Junior High and then to Malden High and graduated with a class of 67. So I'm a proud graduate of Malden High School. Always happy to be home. Um, always happy to have great food. And I love seeing all my high school friends. They're wonderful. They're very good to me. I love them. <laughs> so growing up in Malden, it was, um, uh, we, my mother and I lived with a family. Uh, they took my mother in when she left my dad. And she had been engaged to their son. And their son was the bombardier uh, with the 8th Army Air Force during World War II. And she had met him in England where she was living at the time. And um, they fell in love and got engaged and all great stuff. And the two mothers were writing to each other and looking forward to a wedding. My mother was especially looking forward to living in America. And then he was killed. Tragically, he was shot down and killed um, over Minden, Germany. And so that dream for her sort of came to an end, but she used to say, oh, I met the Americans and it changed my life forever, and all I wanted to do was go to America. So she did end up in, in Malden, and we were living with this family. She got a job at John Hancock, and she used to take the train from Pearl Street Station into Boston every day to work at John Hancock. And on Fridays, when she got off the train, she would go across the street to the fish market that was on the corner, and she would get some sort of fish for us for Friday. And we had a cat, so the fishermen would always give her, from the market would always give her fish heads and whatever for the cat, who was crazy about that. Um, so I lived um, initially on Sprague Street, uh, near the fire station, if you recall, and across the street from Malden High School. And then we lived on Lincoln Street, and I went to BB. And then we moved to Mount Vernon Street, sort of the top of Mount Vernon Street, when I went to Malden High School. So growing up in Malden was, uh, for me, um, I can never replace those years. They were just a special time. I was very close to my friends growing up, and I still am. My college friends, really, I have maybe one college friend I'm in touch with, but my high school friends from all in high school, um, I'm always in touch with them. So I had some great times, and I enjoyed going to Malden High School. Um, I met some great people and went on to go to Northeastern, I was accepted into the School of Nursing there and um, used to take, the, I guess, the bus, right, from Malden Square to Everett Station and then Everett Station to Park Square and they had to take the trolley out to Huntington Ave to go to Northeastern. So, um, and I remember it was 1970 and the miniskirts were in fashion. And my knees were like ice cubes. That was so cold trying to stand out there waiting for the trolley to come. Because you know, they're never on time. And when they, one comes, two come. One right after the other, but they're never on time. And so um, I did graduate from Northeastern. And I said, you know what? I'm going to head for warmer places because I'm tired of this cold. And so I moved to Hawaii with to Honolulu with a classmate. Um, but I had worked at Mass General for a year. I had done my co-ops at Mass General. It was a great experience. I loved Mass General, and they hired me when I graduated. And um, do you remember Derek Sanders for the Boston Bruins? Derek Sanderson. Yeah. Yes, I do. Uh, yeah, I remember going out. I was underage, and the other nurses would... Um, kind of huddled me through into these bars where I was under eight. And I remember meeting Derek Sanders one night um, at one of the bars, I can't even remember where, near Mass General that they took me to. So that was a thrill. But I had a great experience. And actually, everything I learned as a nurse, really, I learned at Mass General. No matter what job I had, no matter where I worked in the world, 
the experiences there just really, really paved the way for me and was wonderful. So lived in Hawaii and um, met my husband there. And then uh, we were stationed overseas in Frankfurt. I worked for the U.S. Army there. And I worked for the U.S. Army at the Pentagon um, when we came back from overseas. And I worked for the Army at Fort Jackson in South Carolina, in Columbia, South Carolina. And I worked for the VA. And I love my veterans. So, um, Well, thank you for your service. Thank Thank you. Thank you for your service. No, you're entirely welcome. My pleasure. Always. So that was kind of me. Wonderful. Well, that's um, that's really quite a um, quite a great summation of your of your career from Malden to mm-hmm. South Carolina through the service in the Army. Yeah, and you had a great career. But at some point, at some point, you became an author, and the I name know. of your book, and the book that that we're going to talk about now is The Secrets Return to the River. Yes, I have a copy here. Wonderful. And I have a copy right here, and I have been, I haven't had a chance to to complete it, and I have my, my copy right here. Uh, also, um, for our uh, listeners at home, we do this, we're on, on video, even though this is an audio-only podcast and all, but it's quite the cover. And I see uh, something about Scotland there, Hawaii and Scotland. So please tell us about the secret to return to the river. Yes, I'd love. Uh, thanks, Paul. I'd love to. Well, as I said, my mother was born in Scotland. In 1939, they moved to England. My grandfather got a job in England where my mother, my grandmother, had been living. She was from Ireland. My my granny was from Ireland, but she had been living in England. So she had some family there from Ireland. So they moved from Scotland to England and lived in Southport, which is on the West Coast, um, just a ferry ride over from Dublin. Um, And my uh, mother spent her teenage years there in England. That's where she met the American. My granny ran what they call the milk bar, uh, not a term that's familiar to most Americans, but what it was, this kind of a coffee shop where they would serve not coffee so much as tea, <laughs> of course, being in England, and then they would have little crumpets and scones and uh, little tea sandwiches for folks to have. And my grandmother was a very jovial, happy person, um, and there was a, an American that came in and he talked with her and he said, you know, I, I don't drink. He said, I don't have anything against it. He said, but I just, it, I don't drink. And he said, because I just don't feel well. He said, but I love my tea. He said, my mother makes tea and I love tea. Could I have a cup of tea? Well, my grandmother, of course, gave him a cup of tea. And then by the end of their time together, he was telling her about his mother in in America, in Boston. She really took to this lad. She thought he was very well raised and very nice, and she wanted her daughter to meet him. So she arranged for my mother to work at the shop on a day when he would be there. And he asked for my grandmother, and my mother said, she's not here, I'm here today. And he said, oh, well, actually, this is even better. (laughs) And so he talked with her, and they started dating. I want to say dating when he was actually stationed on the east coast of England, flying bombing raids into Germany. And she was on the West Coast, but it was an R and R. It was a seaport. It was a resort where she lived, and so they would send the American flyboys there. And so they fell in love, and they became engaged. And as I said, he was shot down and killed um, in Minden. But she said by then she knew she wanted to go to America, so she couldn't get into the United States because she was not married. And they were only taking war brides. And so with her British passport, she went to Canada. 
Um, so she, um, the ship was from Liverpool and it went to Halifax, Nova Scotia, and she took a train to Montreal. And so she lived in Montreal. She found a job there and she was living there when she met my father, who was Canadian. And so he and she worked at the same business that he did. And that's how they met. And they met at a bowling dinner. And um, he fell in love with her immediately. He just thought she was the most beautiful woman he had ever seen. So he fell madly in love with her and um, wanted to be married. And so they got married and they took a honeymoon to the to British Columbia out in Victoria and stayed at there at the Empress Hotel, uh, where she became pregnant with me. And then, as I said, um, as time went by, she very much wanted to always visit with her uh, American uh, fiancé's family. So she took the train from Montreal to South Station back in the day, and his whole family, which was very large, they were Irish and Scottish, and his whole family met her at the train station. They had a fabulous uh, reunion together. She wanted to go back that November because she'd never experienced Thanksgiving. they That's not a holiday they have in Britain, of course. And so she decided there was going to be a wedding, and that was going to be in Malden. And she was excited about meeting more of this uh, boy's family. And then she was going to stay for Thanksgiving. And so I had other plans, and she went into labor, and there I was at uh, South Shore Hospital in Weymouth, so. But her story was sad in the sense that she encountered a lot of loss in her life. But in the book starts out with um, the first loss. She had a friend in Scotland, um, a male friend that she went to school with, and they would always race their bikes. And he was run over by a, a truck, and he was, he was killed. And she came across the scene, and she tries to lift up his body. And she tries to hug him. And his arm is just severed from his body. And she never knew what got into her, but she picked up his arm, and she carried it to school because she thought she wanted to take him to school because that's where they were headed. She was probably only nine or ten years old, so that was really the first loss that she experienced. And then she was the youngest of seven girls, and I don't know in your families where your uh, birth status is, but she was the youngest, and she so she was the gopher. She was the gopher. Anybody wanted anything, they didn't do it themselves. They told her to do it. Bring me this, get me that, go there, go there. And she just hated it that <laughs> people were telling her what to do. She had sisters that were nurses, and so she decided she wanted to be a nurse. And her older sister that, that was a nurse said, well, what kind of nurse do you want to be? And she said, I want to work in the operating theater. And they said, why in the operating theater? She said, because then they can't talk to you. They're asleep. And I just want to take care of them, but I don't want to listen to all their complaints. And so I want them to be asleep when I take care of them. I don't want them awake, so I have to listen to them. Of course, the war came, and she never did become a nurse. But she she experienced a lot of loss. I had a, a baby brother who was born about three or four years after I, and, and he passed away. He died in her arms. Uh, he was not even a year old. And if you read up on history, women will understand there's something called the Coombs test. C-O-O-M-B-S was the doctor's name, the Coombs test is a test they give to pregnant women when they're about 28 weeks pregnant. And it's determined to determine if there's sort of incompatibility between blood types. So that if you're a, a negative with a positive, 
Um, it can be detrimental to children, to babies. And um, so that's what happened with my parents was my mother was RH negative, my dad was positive. So by the time my brother was born, um, he had uh, the condition that, that occurs with that, and he, um, and he died. So that was a terrible loss for her also. Um, she just continued to have losses. However, she remained, always remained a very positive person. She was never, ever really a negative person. She always was able to remain positive. She loved America. She really did. She became an American citizen, and she, was, she always would vote, and, and she encouraged people around her, don't just sit there. You need to make a change. You need to vote. And so she always encouraged even myself, you know, yeah, you need to get out there and vote. So she was sort of more Americans than, American than a lot of Americans. She, um, she loved this country. She learned a lot living in, Mo in Boston because she didn't know anything about really baseball or football. Those were not sports that she was normally seen in, in the UK. And so she learned a lot about Babe Ruth, and the curse of the Bambino and all of the things that we grew up with. She loved the Boston Bruins and used to go with the John Hancock to the Bruins games. And I do remember that the John Hancock, they had an employee group and they used to take trips. So they took us to New York and we, I went skating at Rockefeller Center. You know, back then you could do that. I don't know if they do that now, but. Um, you could skate, rent skates, and I skated around Rockefeller Center. And then, you know, they have kind of the plaza there with the flags of all the countries. If you've been there, you'll know what I mean. And she said, and I was probably about eight or nine, and she said, okay, love, she said, go and stand by the flag, and I'll take your picture, and I'll send it home. And she meant, you know, to her family, and I said, okay. So I went and I stood by the American flag. And she said, what are you doing? And I said, you said to stand by the flag. And she said, oh, I meant the Union Jack. And I said, mom, that's not my flag. And she said, that's when she realized that she had a daughter that was an American. And that was just going to be the way it was. I was never going to be a Brit. <laughs> that's right. That's great. Well, it, all these um, all these great stories are really just a great tribute to your mom in the secret to return to the river. And I understand from chatting with you as we were um, booking this episode that you're working on a second book, author Sandra yes. Mary Platt Cross. Yes, yes, I am. Yes. So, yeah, and I think this will be a, a really good book. My mother had... Uh, several half-sisters um, because her mother had been married before and her first husband had um, been tragically lost in World War I. Um, so those sisters were her half-sisters and um, the second to the oldest actually worked at the BBC. She wrote children's stories, but she read them on, on radio because remember back then they didn't have TV. And so people got all of their information gathered around the radio in the evening. And so her sister would read children's books on the radio. Um, and she was recruited by what was called the um, SIS. So it was a, a, a secret intelligence service um, in Britain, in England. Um, and it began after Churchill came to power. Um, and he, he also, he was strongly believed that women made very good spies for a lot of reasons. And so he encouraged the recruitment of females and she was recruited as a spy in World War II for Britain. And so I'm sort of writing about her story um, and how all of that happened in World War II for her. So it's, I think it'll be really good. I I'm, I'm, have learned a lot 
um, above intelligence services. And um, so I think in, it'll be very, very, a very good book to read and a good follow-up to um, the book about my mother. Um, and I would just say about that that there's a lot of stories within the book about the secrets that my mother had um, that she used to go back to Scotland and she would sit by the Clyde River and um, just kind of throw stones in, a stone being for each little secret that she had. She was trying to sort of let go of it um, and and find finds herself again and make herself whole and get back to it. Um, my dad, as it turned out, was married to somebody else. So my mother was never really married to him. That was a secret that she had that she kept from a lot of people, um, that she was never legally married to my dad. So there's a lot of family secrets that um, get returned to the Clyde River in Scotland. And this new book, I think it'll be good. I think you'll enjoy Absolutely. Absolutely, it will definitely. And excuse me for maybe making a pun here, but it's true that I believe that this book will have a rippling effect on the on on the readers and all. And and Very how good. does? And well, thank you, thank you. Yes. <laughs> so we're just letting these letting it's these wonderful. topics flow. We're yeah. letting these topics flow <laughs> through. Yeah, that's now, great. Now, how do our listeners to this podcast, this hashtag Paul Ponders uh, podcast? purchase the book. Is it available on Amazon? It is. It's available on Amazon.com. And if you live in Malden, there are actually three copies in the Malden Library. Oh, that's fabulous. Absolutely. And I know you had a book signing at, at Pearl Street Station Restaurant. Yes, I did. It, it went very fun. well. And I thank you for my copy as well. Yeah, and I met Pete Queso and Mike Clarity, and I met the Mayor of Malden, and just met you and just had a wonderful time. Absolutely. Well, it's really great to have you on, and I would love to uh, to be able to have you on again when book number two, I don't know if you're at liberty to give us the name of the book or if you even have a name for the book, but uh, we look forward to, to definitely hearing and reading book number two. That'll be great. I'm thinking about are you ready for this? I know it's yes. you try more secrets return to the river. Ooh, more secrets. So more more rippling effects, right? Right. Since she was a spy. <laughs> oh. Now do you think James Bond will be involved in this? Well, uh, she would have worked with James uh, Bond's creator. Ian Fleming? Yes, Ian Fleming was with that same British intelligence service as she was. Yes, this is all that I'm learning. Wow. British spies. So he actually worked with her. Whoa. Uh, and not that anyone would necessarily know that. The sad thing is she was killed. She was shot dead coming out of the bank in London. So somebody found out who she was and killed her. So she was 20 when she died. My, wow. Yeah. Young person, well, yeah. Well, do you have a time frame as to when when you think the book will be published? I don't. I'm, I'm really still doing a lot of research. Um, I pretty much have the story line, but I'm still doing research. So and sometimes that takes longer. I haven't done anything over this holiday season. I'll start again in the new year. I'm hoping maybe by the summer. That's great. The summer of 2024. I know. Let's, let's check our local listings, our book stands and Amazon for a release of book number two from Malden High Class of 1967 graduate, Ooh. Sandra Mary Platt Norcross. I want to thank you for being on. And thank I you, want to, Really, do you have a website for the book uh, where, where people could uh, find out more about the book and even go in and purchase? No, I don't. I'm thinking about getting that, though. If anyone has some suggestions, I am thinking about doing that. But to date, I have not, so... They would need to just get in touch with me personally, and I'm happy to answer any questions. 
Well, that is fabulous. So we'll have to uh, just check back in and maybe if you want to post something on the um, PS and all marketing group uh, website or the paulponders.com, we're happy to, to do that and to follow up on that with you. That's a great idea. And I, I want to um, yeah, just give a shout out to the other great authors that we have from, from yes. all that you mentioned, Mike Clarity. Yeah. Uh, we got James Norris. Uh, we have Dave Cayazzo and Joey Voices, Joey Noon. So we've had uh, quite a few authors, and it's great to have you on, really, Sandra. And congratulations on publishing The Secrets Return to the River. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for being on with us. And again, thank you for your service to the United States Army, um, your nursing career, and just uh, being a super, super person. So I want to thank you for being on this episode of Hashtag Paul Ponders. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. You. Thank, thank you. you. Same here. So um, that about does it for this uh, for this episode of Hashtag Paul Ponders. Again, check out Amazon, log in, sign in, and get The Secrets Return to the River by Malden High School graduate. Class 1967 graduate, Sandra Mary Platt Norcross. That's N-O-R-C-R-O-S-S. That about does it for this episode. Techie Talonzo in the control room behind the curtain. Thank you for doing a great job. Hashtag indeed. Merry Christmas. I trust that you have enjoyed Hashtag Paul Ponders. Again, my name is Paul Solano of PS and All Marketing Group and I may be reached via email at paul at paulponders.com to do some more pondering. Many thanks to my longtime collaborative friend and associate, Alonzo Amos of Pod Pro Entertainment, in bringing you our fun, exciting, and informative podcast. You rock, Techie Chalonzo. With PNS and All Marketing Group, I created a side gig to connect you and get things done. Please do not hesitate to reach out to me at paul at paulponders.com with any questions. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Paul Ponders. Follow us on Twitter at Paul Ponders Pod. Follow us on Instagram at Paul Ponders Podcast. Thank you again for listening to Hashtag Paul Ponders, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, our website paulponders.com, or wherever you stream your podcasts subscribe stream rate and review our shows your ratings and reviews help our show reach new audiences produced by pod pro entertainment hashtag paul ponders lives within a network of podcasts located at podproentertainment.com hashtag the new radio until we meet again my friend stay well hashtag indeed